Do not confuse this with treatment or mental health advice or direction. Nothing on this podcast is made to supplement or supersede the relationship and direction of your mental health caretakers. Although David Koslowski is a licensed marriage and family therapist, he is not functioning as a certified mental health professional in this environment. And same applies to any professional who may appear on the Light the Fight podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Light the Fight, and I have my co-host here, my new ride or die friend slash correspondent slash father dealing with kids himself, Mr. Jason Hewlett himself. Thanks for coming, Jason. Love it. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Great. Appreciate it. I thought you gave me a fist bump there. Well, yeah, moving I was, the mic. I was moving the mic. Just okay, like, well, I got to get closer. Oh, take we're a fist bump fist too. Bump. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to answer a couple questions from uh, some of the people on Instagram, right? So we put out, uh, hey, what, what questions would you like for David? And so we uh, got a number of questions. We're not going to be able to get to all of them right now, but we are going to get to two today. But before we do that, we just want to give a, a friendly reminder that 1-800-CONTACTS does not suck. In fact, they're the opposite of sucking. So if you need contacts, go to 1-800-CONTACTS. You get them a nice, cool package. They'll get them straight to your door and they'll get them at a great price and you're getting them from great people because they support like the fight. So of course they're great people. So one hundred contacts, don't think about it, go do it. So for the episode, let's get some questions. So I believe our producer gave you the questions. Producer gave us questions. This first one is, uh, says my teen is a good kid, but mm. he's a my way or the highway and a guy. What's the best way to parent? The first thing that comes to my mind is, who does he take more after? Oh, yeah. The person asking the question or the person that's asking the question's partner? Whoever's sending that question right now is they're listening to this part. They know the answer and only them. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> that's, it it's neither here nor there, but I just wonder. I'm like, hmm, wonder. Because, you know, I sit across from parents all the time, and sometimes they'll say, my child is sweet, but... And they go on to, you know, to elaborate on that. And sometimes if I feel comfortable with them, I'm like, so who does he take more after? Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's a pretty quick answer, you know, unless the parents are really guarded. Every now and then a parent will be like, well, neither of us, we're, we're, we don't have any of those types of defiant type issues. I'm like, hmm, short term memory loss, huh? <laughs> so uh, you, you forgot about how you were growing up. Yeah. Or as my brother wisely said to my mom one day when she said, son, because he was such a bad kid. I hope you have a kid just like you someday. My brother's response was, Mom, you must have been a really bad kid. Oh, man. Touche. He was always clever at saying <laughs> things that could get him hit and yeah, really. in trouble. Oh, jeez. So, got a good kid, but what was the part about the attitude again? Say it again. My way or the highway? My way or the highway? You know what? Sounds like to me that he needs to know what lane he's supposed to be driving in on the highway. Okay. Well, yeah. most, most logical, normal people, when they have kids and they get some sort of resentment, they get some sort of pushback, they get some sort of, uh, well, his personality could just be this, right? You know, having kids, yeah. sometimes you get a kid who's, you know, more subservient, more kind of just goes with the flow, doesn't really have a lot of pushback. And then some families, if you have enough kids, you may have one in the litter that comes out pretty barky, pretty demanding. And you find out pretty quickly they lack empathy mm -hmm. and compassion for other human beings. Now, it doesn't have to be a diagnosable thing. It doesn't have to be in like they're, you know, um, oppositional defiant or that they're, you know, actually Satan spawn or a horrible kid. But if it's my way or the highway, it tends to kind of lead towards a personality that's more self-centered or more self-focused. Again, not making it out to be your kid's a bad kid, but you did say he's sweet. But, so I'm just going off the butt part. So if he's my way or the highway, giving him a lane to drive on the highway means that when you have a kid like this, instead of taking the pushback, instead of like, I want it my way, I want it my way, is to actually help them understand that wanting it their way is going to be helpful in life in a lot of ways. In fact, I would go on to say if I was counseling this kid, now remember you heard the, the opening statement, this is not therapy. I'm not counseling you, but if I was be counseling a young man like this, which I obviously have before, I would help that young man really own up to it. 
acknowledge that they really want what's best for them and kind of just like, just validate. It's like, Hey, you know what? You tend to really want things your way. And instead of saying my way or the highway, I'd like to rephrase it and say, you really just know what you want. And it's usually you want it now quickly and not later. So son, in your lifetime, if you were to harness that energy and put that in the right direction, you could become very great in lots of professions. Because that type of assertiveness, if it's not overbearing, if it's not something overly aggressive. So what you want to do is you want to compliment your kid and help them see that you're not going to be resistant, resistant to their constant demands. You're going to actually give them a little attaboy. It's like, you know what? I used to be mad at you. I used to always mock you and make fun of you saying that's your highway, your way of the highway. By the way, I'm thinking of a mom that I did this with. I said, mom, why don't you listen to me? Give your son compliments about the thing that you're pissed off and hate about him the most. And the mom was like, are you sure you want to give him compliments about this? I'm like, trust me. I'm sure it is a Jedi mind trick. Yeah. Okay. By the way, just to tell you guys the same thing I told that mom, no one argues with you when you're telling them great things about them. Right. It's really easy when you're being agreeable with someone wants it their wants and demands for them to be like, I'm listening. Compliment someone how great they look, how amazing they are. And they'll de- rarely do they tell you, shut up, stop talking. Even if they know you're kind of trying to manipulate them a little bit, they'll be like, uh, go on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they usually kind of tend to allow you to finish your thoughts. Yeah. So most parents in the situation, they want to interject. They want to say, well, you know, why should I give you what you want? Because you always demand something. It's always your way or the highway. Well, then that causes them to put up their dukes and get protective and defensive. So instead, I want you to do the opposite. So I told this mom, watch me give your son compliments for his overbearing, what she called it, his aggressive, selfless behavior. So we got in there and I said, you know what? I just want to tell you something. I know you've uh, been called things like self-centered before. Have you ever been called that before? He's like, yeah. He's like, why? Just like, no, no, I'm not saying that you have to defend it. So you've been called self-centered before. With some things that your mom calls you. Now the mom got really awkward and uncomfortable because she's like, you're literally asking him to tell you my worst moments when I was frustrated, the things I called my son. So she wanted to hide a little bit. Luckily I'd got the permission from her ahead of time. She knew what I was doing and she also trusted me, right? So she he goes on saying, she says, I don't care about my siblings. I'm selfish. Uh, might even have said, my way or the highway. I don't care about anyone else. And I go, so when she tells you those things, it makes you happy. It makes you really excited. And, and you're like, please, mommy, tell me more. He's like, no, it pisses me off. I go, why does that piss you off? He's like, well, just yesterday, I loaned my friend $5 because he didn't have money for lunch. And well, that doesn't sound like a selfish person. He's like, no. Now, mind you, he said he loaned him. He didn't just give him $5. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was ironic that he thought loaning someone money but I know him, he'll probably ask for interest on it because he was what his mom was saying. Yeah. And the mom was like kind of listening, like going like, see, he's, you know, he's not giving anyone anything. <laughs> he's a banker. I, I go, I go, okay. I said, I go, so, uh, so you loan $5. Well, that sounds pretty like helpful, not too self-centered. I go, yeah. I go, tell me some other things that you've done to help people out in your life. He goes, well, I did this. My friend has problems with math. I stayed late helping with math and this and that and the other. So he started giving us lots of examples of things that he does that doesn't meet his mom's accusation of him. Why was I doing this? Yeah. Well, what was happening in this time that he was saying that? I was understanding why he was so defensive and doubling down on being self-centered when he was called self-centered, or in this case, my way or the highway. He only kept score of all the good things he did. Mm. He didn't keep score of his selfishness and all those negative things. In fact, those were the times where he usually justified his actions. So I heard this a long time ago. Now, this is not like a religious thing. It was just a a, a saying, right? Person said that we're most protective of our favorite sins. Mm. I thought it was clever nuance that they said our favorite sins. Yeah. I remember the times when I was working drug and alcohol treatment and rehabilitation, and there was always a saying that addicts are extremely protective of their addiction, hence their favorite sin. Yeah. That's so an interesting phrase. This young man 
he was really protective of things that he didn't want to share. Mm. Things that it was like, he knew he should have been more like giving to his little siblings of their time when they wanted him. He's the big brother. They just wanted his time and attention, but he's protective of it because he felt as the big brother his whole entire life. He was asked to babysit. He was asked to do this. He was asked to do that. So he believed in his mind as he started telling me all the things he did with people. He was saying, I'm forced to be selfless. I'm forced to care about other people. So my way of having my own autonomy and keeping things that I want to do for myself is to be self-centered or self-focused. But he justified it as I've always been doing everything for everybody else. This is my time. Now his mom started to understand that he really believed that he wasn't that self-centered and he had some, actually had some good points, right? He was at the age where he wanted to hang out with his friends more. Mom was at the age where, wow, you can drive? I would like you to help me with my mom responsibilities more. And his attitude was like, I've been doing that my whole entire life. I'm done. I don't want to be a parent. Now, in her opinion, it was like, he really didn't do that much. He just, you know, picked him up every now and then. It wasn't like he was a babysitter all the time. She'd have to hire babysitters where she was like, some of my friends, their kids just babysit. I have to spend money on babysitters because he won't do it. What he was doing is he was fighting for his own autonomy, his own time with his friends and his own, his own space. I informed the mom, but let's just go along with this because what he's doing, his personality makes it so it's more extreme because she had an older daughter who did the opposite. So he was the oldest son. The oldest daughter was babysitting these things, but she went on to college. The oldest son was like, I'm not doing what my older sister did. I want to go hang out with my friends. So what she got to see in her own time is that he was fighting for his own autonomy. He was trying to be with him, like do his own thing. And as she pushed back and insulted him and said all these selfish things, it didn't motivate him to be selfless. It caused the opposite to happen. In his mind, he'd been trying to do that, but for his personality, it was really hard. And I also told the mom and I told him in front of him, I said, what you're actually doing is what you're supposed to be doing. Now, I had the mom's reaction of like, wait, wait, I was with you up until you said that, Dave. <laughs> and I said, let me explain. I wasn't giving him a pass to be self-centered. I was saying, per human psychology of teenage development, time of your year, time of life, you're supposed to start caring more about friends than your family. You're supposed to looking for your own personal identity. So from 18 to 25 years old, from you know early teenagers to 18 years old, you're really looking for what label, what you can belong to. I'm a basketball player. I'm a jock. I'm a skater. I'm a, an actor. I'm a musician. Like you're looking for some sort of like group identity that you can be a part of something. From 18 to 25, that's when like I want to be different than everyone else. I'm a musician, but I'm not like those musicians. I'm like these other 10,000 musicians, not the million <laughs> musicians. You know when young people think they're like. I'm unique and different. Have you ever read this book? Have you ever heard this artist? You're like, yeah, like for 20 years. Like <laughs> to them, it's new, right? It's this yeah. new on thing. Like it's so new. So I said, you're actually supposed to be becoming more self-centered, putting your friends as a higher priority of your family, because at this stage of life, our ancestors would have been moving out, starting their own tribe, starting their own family, or having their own teepee lease on a different part of the property for them to live and create their own family. I said, so what you're doing is actually what you're supposed to be doing right now. I said, however, there's a better way to go about doing it. So I gave him all the accolades, all the praise, all the attaboys, this and that. And then I started to reel it back. in. So then the mom started to go, okay. I said, so you are doing it in a way that makes your mom feel like you don't want to be with the family. You're doing it in a way that makes your mom feel like you don't care. You're doing it in a way that makes your mom feel as if the only way you can be happy is if you have to be alone. So let's look at reality. You, because he's about to turn 18 years old. You're going to be 18 years old. And in the eyes of law, you are an adult, right? He's like, yeah, I'm being an adult. And the mom's like, yeah, you know, and he says all these things you need to do when he's an adult, that he's going to live these freedoms, stuff like that. I said, so when you turn 18, do you have $100,000 in a bank account? And are you moving out? Or do you just want to stay out as late as you want to stay out? It's like, uh, well, I just want to stay out later because this was his thing they told me. He didn't like his curfew. I said, well, if you're a real adult, why don't you just go buy your own house? Hmm. Well, uh, so then I explained to him. I said, okay, let's be very clear. 
You'll be an adult in a couple months, but you'll be a semi-professional adult. <laughs> no one's paying you to be an adult when you're 18 years old. You still have a long ways to become a self-sufficient, independent adult. So I said, Mom, here's what we're going to do. You need to give him a job in the family, but his job is going to be more of the type of manager that can work from home, that can be out on the field like a general manager. Managers have to be inside the house running the operations. He doesn't want that job anymore. No. He wants to be a regional manager. He wants to fly from Colorado to Utah to Arizona. He wants the West Coast region. He started laughing. He's like, technically, do you want to go to a trip to Vegas? <laughs> and so he loved it. So it kind of loosened things up all because I started with putting him in a lane, going back to the original. It's his way or the highway. It's my way or the highway. Well, really, he's on the highway and he's swerving all around. Let's just give him his own designated lane, his own position, his own title. So I said, Mom, let's make him a regional manager. And in the regional manager position, you allow him to have certain freedoms that extend where you normally feel comfortable as long as he gives you certain uh, reassurances, just a couple basic things. So he narrowed it down to there's two times a week she really needed him to pick up the younger sibling. And before he turned 18, she was going to extend his curfew by an hour as a good faith gesture. Okay. And she was like, I am. And he was like, she is. <laughs> and I go, if she were to do that. Yeah. And if you were to just, just in exchange for you not forgetting to pick up your siblings. Cause if you want to be true, like an adult, you should just pick them up because you agreed to, she shouldn't have to call you five minutes for, are you there? Oh, I forgot I'm with my friends. Well, then she's going to forget that she gave you the extra hour curfew and she's going to take away the car. Nice. So there was an agreement that he was like, wait a second. So there was something in it for him, his way or the highway, some self-centeredness. But the self-centeredness was to promote him having his own independent and living outside the normal realm of the typical household. Now, she was like, well, I just, we never did this with our older daughter. And our older daughter, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Your older daughter was Mary Poppins. <laughs> you got lucky. <laughs> he is not Michael Poppins. Michael okay. Poppins. <laughs> He is more like wants to pop out of the house every chance he gets. He's not that kid. He's like, yeah, he's like, you know, he's wearing some interesting clothing, yeah. had an interesting hairstyle. He made it very obvious he did not want to be a part of their type of like la 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 type of family, right? <laughs> so they made this agreement and I told him, I cannot help you. If you don't do what you're supposed to be doing that during the week, mom, he doesn't get that curfew. And she goes, well, he'll just take the car keys. I said, oh, he will. And I looked at him and go, you're just going to take the car keys? And he's like, I go, have you done that before? He's like, uh, she's like, yes, there was this one time. I go, okay. That was before he became regional manager. I said, in a real business, if they gave you a company car and you went out in that company car and you're supposed to bring it back and you didn't bring it back, guess what would happen? You don't have a company car anymore and you lose that position. I said, you will go back to an hour earlier curfew than you currently have if you just take the car. Mm -hmm. I said, just take the L. If you don't pick up the kids, that's your own dang fault. No one can help you from that. If you have a real job and you don't show up on time, no one's paying you for not going to work that day. So he started to see that he was given an opportunity to have more freedom. And she had to give him some benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, you, you have been helpful in these other areas. She had to stretch the truth a little bit. She's like, I guess that one time I didn't have to remind you, right? Mm. But for him, it was not her daughter. It was more difficult. So to answer that question, if you have a kid that is like my way or the highway, see how you can twist that and tweak that around to actually say, you know what? That means you're going to be a kid that your superpower could be. You're assertive. You ask for a raise. The mom, her personality, she would never ask for a raise. She would stay at a job for 20 years, get paid the same amount of money when everyone else got paid more money. She'd complain about it to other people, but she'd never actually ask for the raise. I go, do you want him to be like that? She goes, no, I want him to be assertive. I go, so let's just rein in the assertiveness so he can be assertive with a compassion, understanding for other people's thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Man, I love how you laid that out in the conversation to them, you know, in terms of like, this is what you're good at. This is why it works. These are the parts that, makes sense for you and then for the mom to sit there and be like oh i didn't realize that there was anything positive about this and for you to then give him the position in the family business you know that's so so savvy guess who wasn't here in the therapy session the dad, dad. guess whose personality type resembled the most <laughs> the dad guess who the older sister's personality type resembled the mom mommy the mom always did what she's told 
She had a to-do list. She did her chores on time, did her homework on time. So the mom's like, I cannot relate with this personality. The dad was like, oh, he'll be fine. He'll get over it. Like, he'll be fine. Like, it didn't really bother the dad that much. Yeah. But of course, guess what the dad was doing? He was a regional manager. He was barely ever home. He was gone Monday through Friday. So the mom was like, he doesn't understand. And you could see this transference from the mom's issues with the dad coming on like, I do not want my son to be just like him. And the son was like, dad does this. Like, why can't I do it? Right. <laughs> so it was definitely there. Now, granted the dad, I want to make the dad like he's a bad guy. But once the dad saw this happen, he was happy of the son. He was appreciative. He just, you know, Monday through Friday, he could never be in our session. So yeah. it worked out really well. And both of them had to have realistic expectations. And if you want to be an adult, you have to have social contracts like an adult. Yeah. Well, on the amount of communication that you opened up between mother and son with that, by setting expectations, this is what mom wants from you. This is what you can offer with your great personality you already have. And this is how you can wrangle things in. I think that was pretty darn slick. So if I'm a, I'm a parent without David Kozlowski coming in and swooping in to fix and save the day, uh, let's say I have this conversation with one of my kids. I go in there and uh, would, it, would it be wise for me to have it just with the child or would it be mom and dad and child or would it be the whole family together having this conversation? What would you say? Um, definitely just the mom and the child. Okay. Um, it's, it doesn't help if put it this way. If the dad's there, that could be effective, but it's still T two V one. Okay. Right. Yeah. So think about the dynamics of two people versus one. In this case, the dad there wouldn't have helped for two reasons. One, because he would have been more short. It's like, Listen, bro, your dad, your mom just wants you to go pick up the brother and says, just do it. Yeah. They're like, fine. The mom, where's her power going to come from if the dad steps in and gets frustrated at the process and just cuts in? The mom needed to grow some assertiveness and the son needed to let go of some need for control. Well said. Right? So I wanted the mom to see what I was doing. So for a parent that didn't have me there, it only works if you start off with first and foremost, an apology. Now, this is a stress for a stretch for some parents. Before I came in and do this podcast, I was on the phone with a, a client that she and I laughed about it because in the very beginning, I used to tell her to apologize to her son when her son did really just stupid teenage type stuff, never listened, never cleaned up anything, but apologized for certain things that she wasn't doing that he would nitpick because he had 99% of the issues and she would make a mistake every now and then. He'd be like, aha, see, your mistake means that I don't have to do anything you asked me to do. It was such a lopsided hypocrisy. Right. It's like, wait, right. mom, you didn't get my dinner ready, so I don't have to do my homework. <laughs> it was like that type of stuff, right? Uh, She's like, your yeah. dinner is ready. Yeah, but it's 15 minutes late. He, that's not a joke. Like, he was very like that, okay? Mm. Of course, he was looking for any reason. So this mom and I just had a good joke because... She looks back at those times and she's like, you know, it was actually very wise that you'd say, you know what, son, I know I don't have the right to demand you to clean up your room or to do your homework because I, I did put out the dinner late and you were hungry. And because of that, you had to walk all the way over to the cabinet and get a protein bar. So that's not right that I did that. And I broke my word and my promise to you. And I know you don't want to break your promise to your teachers. And to me and your dad for stuff that you're going to do. So she was modeling for him the behavior that she wanted him to give to her. So actually apologizing is less about you being right or wrong. And it's more about you going first. Yeah. So this only works if you apologize first. After you apologize, once you get that out to there to, to, to your kid, then you say, so from now on, because a really good apology has to have an admission and then a call to action, hmm. a plan of what you're going to do. Sure. So when someone says, hey, I'm sorry for being a jerk, good talk. <laughs> and that, and scene. <laughs> <laughs> Usually there's someone going, going, I think we're missing a couple yeah. steps here. Like, <laughs> I want reassurance. Like, he wants reassurance yeah. that just like she wants reassurance. So she, I say, go first. So as parents, you apologize first, find out whatever the situation that needs to be apologized but it's not like, I'm sorry for being a bad per parent. I'm sorry that you like your other friend's parents more than me. <laughs> and don't play the victim apology because no. that's that can be kids like, oh, here you go. My parents give me a guilt trip again. It's a sincere, no, I really do see that 
that was my bad, no matter how small it may be. And then you switch it just like I did. This is where you come to play the role. It's like, and also I want to do something that I haven't done before. Instead of telling you it's your way or the highway and mocking and making fun of you, it'll probably make you a good attorney someday. All joking aside, like yeah. you're probably, I just don't like it because I'm not like that. But if I were to see it, like if you were to use your, and I was, I like this one. If you're to use your powers for good all the time <laughs> instead of evil, like you got to be lighthearted. You don't want to be yeah. sarcastic because that's poking fun. Like if you were to use this power for good, like you could get a lot done. I wish I was more assertive like you. So instead of saying you're over demanding your, your way or the highway, technically you have the foundational development to be assertive. Yeah. So I actually envy that in you. Give them a compliment. Then you can direct that into a more productive, positive, use your powers for good instead of evil. And then you listen to this podcast about the details that I said. Hey, listen, here, let's do this. I'm going to work on this. Obviously, you know, you're not trying to make me mad. You don't wake up in the morning saying, how can I make my mom feel I'm self-centered and I'm narcissistic? Because obviously, that would be the first start. wink, wink, you know? <laughs> so you give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't know, especially if you're a woman listening to this, I don't know if you figured this out in all your years of your life, but every now and then, if you give the men in your life, a boy, your son, or your husband, the benefit of the doubt, it makes them feel good and it calms and pacifies them. But a lot of women have told me, I try that and then they take it for granted. Well, that's just like you don't say an apology, I'm sorry, and then that's it. So you don't just give someone the benefit of the doubt. Say, hey, you know what? I know you didn't mean to be rude. I know you didn't mean to act this way. And, you know, I'm sorry for doing this. So end of conversation. You have to use that to manipulate to get what you want from them. It's easier to get the men in your life using a husband or using a son in this situation or a disgruntled kid. It's easier to get them to work with you if you apologize, give them compliments, and then negotiate. Well, there you go. Mic drop. So, uh, yeah, I was thinking, man, if it was my wife and I, that would feel a little bit like ganging up on him. Yeah. You know? And so I like how you said that. And uh, I love how you give those those tools. That's wonderful. So I think I know what I need to do for. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, if you have a friend. A friend. With kids, right? I have a friend who has this problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, every kid has their personality. Yeah. And there are. There are kids that are more passive, you know, that that you have in your family, but can then have that aggression moment yeah, or that part where you're like, oh, there is a part of me in there. Right. Yep, absolutely. And so having the ability to say, OK, we can we can step out of this moment and have a conversation together where I acknowledge, you know, there, there needs to be an apology and a plan. There needs to be, you know, giving giving compliments and compassion and then benefit of the doubt. That's awesome. And just knowing as a parent that. It's not just the behavior of your kid at the moment that's causing you the anger, the frustration, the discomfort. It's the fear that it will continue and it will affect their life. Right. And it'll affect their relationships. It'll make them unemployable. No one will want to date them. Parents go to worst case scenario pretty dang fast, like gone in 60 seconds. Yeah. Right. And so just knowing that, hey, listen, this is part, like when I gave that example of that mom, I've had to tell a lot to parents. In fact, a couple of parents are like, did you just make that up? Is that really a part of their development? I'm like, it was on my test. Like in order to get licensed as a therapist, that was like one of the sections. It was like mm. teenagers are the disruptors to make sure the family doesn't ever get comfortable, always has to evolve. Teenagers bring information from the outside world, bring it to the family. The family says, no, we will not accept that information as valid information. And they shut down the teenager. The family will never evolve. Teenagers are the scouts for the family. They're literally bringing information bring it to the family to put it up against the family's um, morals, beliefs, whatever it is. And if the family accepts some of it and starts to implement it to improve the family, then the family gets stronger in, a, in an evolution. But a lot of families, they fear the information as if that information is a threat to their way of life, not knowing that's the best thing for them. Mom and dad aren't out in the streets. They're not out in the world with their finger on the pulse of things. They're just doing their thing. Teenagers are literally, they were the scouts for uh, Native American tribes. You don't have 50-year-old guys sneaking around the middle of the night looking at the other tribes, see if there's planning war. No, they let the 15-year-olds do that because it's, 
they don't go to sleep anyways at night. They're up night, <laughs> curious around, sneak around, right? Where you're playing so capture the flag, you know, toilet paper in someone's house. Like that is in our DNA. So let them do what they're supposed to be doing. Let them bring information. As crazy it may sound, don't be so quick to discount the information. Kind of hear it out. And if it seems self-centered, it's probably because it is because it's their job to be self-centered at that age. Some kids just more than others. Man, I've heard you say something to that effect before, but the way you just described it is awesome. Because I, you know, I never really put together how important it is for them to bring information and essentially the present of what's occurring in the world, which we in our cocoon in our home haven't perhaps opened up our eyes as much as yeah. the teenager who's exploring and looking for a way out, almost like this Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, yeah, right. They're just <laughs> tasting things. Like, What's that? Like they're putting everything in their mouth and their mind just tasting it. And when teenagers, I love when teenagers say. You know, I believe this, and parents start to freak out. I'm like, hey, calm down. They don't, they, don't, they don't know what they believe. They're just trying stuff. They're just That's trying right. on different things. Let them have their, if you've had teenagers long enough, you know, it's like, you know, when I grew up, I'm going to be this. Two weeks later, you know, I found my true calling. <laughs> you, know, you know, I decided that with my new friend, they haven't influenced me, but I decided I'm going to start dressing just like them for no reason all of a sudden. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, you know, a lot of parents like to mock that, make fun of that. Allow it to breathe, allow it to happen. Don't react so quickly to it. And realize, wow, that's interesting. Wow, thank you. Okay, I've never even heard of that band before. Instead of freaking out, you can't listen to that music. It's going to rot your brain. Just let it all soak in. Let them kind of try different hats on, figuratively and sometimes literally. Yeah. And next, you know, if they feel like they have influence over you, now when it's your turn, you're going to easier influence them. Oh, man, that's really interesting. And I, I wonder as a dad, when they bring the information, and it is so let's just say immoral or, you know, negative piercings, tattoos, like stuff that you're like, crazy what? hair, crazy dress, Don't bring right? this in here, whether yeah. it's friends or no other. child of mine's going to dress like that. Um, so I just, I just find that, man, we should do another podcast on that. Yeah, we can totally do it. In fact, this one went so long. Let's do this. Let's, <laughs> let's end this one. Let's do another question. We'll just rip off. So every new, anyone that a uh, asked questions, um, we're going to get to them. We're just going to, you know, crank out the answers. But I think this was a good one. I obviously elaborated more than just that one specific spot, but that's kind of what I do sometimes. I just kind of go in tangents and freestyle a little bit. Well, you're awesome at riffing. That, that's what I was, that's where you're I was looking for, riffing. See, <laughs> that's why I got the professional entertainer. Yeah. Enter, entertainer. The entertainer, the, 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 man. Entertainer. <laughs> I can't even talk. You know it's time to end the podcast now. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. No, but uh, what you said, I think you, you nailed it on the head with the question. And uh, obviously now I know better how to deal with it with my own children. And also to be able to have those ideas of what a teenager brings to the table. That's so cool. I mean, you know, uh, other than just being entertaining to listen to late at night when they're just like, and now I'm awake. <laughs> and they tell you every story as you're trying to sleep at midnight. It's so funny how they're just. They're like they're dead for the whole day. And yeah. then at midnight, they're like, now I'm ready to tell you everything. And you're like, I'm listening. It's an easy Google <laughs> search that um, teenagers, I think last time I saw it, they, there's a lot of, no one's changing education, but there is a lot of studies that said with teens specifically, we shouldn't start school with them until about 10, 10 30. I totally Because agree. their brain's not even online. And, no. if you, and if you're a teacher's out there in high school like me, that's a fact. <laughs> I, I told the high school specifically, I will only start in second period. Do not give me first period. <laughs> if I get kids at 7.30 in the morning, first of all, I i don't have my brain on. It's I'm, the I'm walking Peter Pan. dead, man. I'm a teenager. Like, I'm like, oh, so be nice to your parents and your friends. The end, right? Like, I wouldn't be much help at that early in the morning either. So yeah. I only do it at two, at uh, second and third period once they start to wake up and stretch out a little bit. So Amazing how they are, but it also keeps us on our toes and it makes us better people if we allow it to. To have a my way or the highway kind of a kid, that's something in its own right when they find the right part on the highway, the right lane, that we can then say to ourselves, well, what, what of the goodness that they bring can I implement in my own life? Yeah. So that's a good thing. Yeah, you definitely, I mean, it's just, it's all, you know, there's cheesy sayings like, it's all how you, it's all, it's your mindset, you know, how you <laughs> see it. Well, really what I'm saying right now is like, your kid's not the problem. They're giving you opportunities to create better solutions. And if you try something like this and it 
instantly does not make them the kid you want them to be, well, then your expectations are totally unrealistic. This is a developmental stage you're going through. This is not an episode. This is a long, long series, not on Netflix. You got to wait each week. It's not, you can't binge this development. It's can't like, okay, hurry up and speed it up. That that's our selfishness and self-centeredness. Yeah. That's us wanting it to happen fast. Yeah. So keeping that promise to light the fight in ourselves, to right. say I'm bringing it every that's day. Right. I'm not going to flip out when this happens. I'm going to help them find their lane while I stay in mine. There you go. All Good right. stuff. Okay. Well, well done, brother. Well, appreciate it. Well, thanks for queuing up the question for me. And, uh, and send and more questions. Well. Yeah, send more questions. We'll have the Instagram post up again. So, uh, thank you guys as always for following us here. If you don't follow us on Instagram and you are on Instagram, please give us a follow. If you uh, visit YouTube, um, go follow us on YouTube as well. And uh, if you don't follow any of those places and you just want to keep on listening to it on Apple, Spotify, whatever it is, you can do that as well. So, until next time, thank you for helping us to light the fight.